Welcome. All right, so how do you solve uh, when a is not equal to one? Now there's a lot of different methods. So even though this video says you know how to do it, I actually am gonna show you a lot of different techniques on how to do this in my, in my course. But what I wanted to go over with you is just a little bit of some general stuff and then actually do an example one uh, in two different methods so you can kind of see an idea of what I'm talking about. So the first thing, when we want to solve um, a quadratic when a is greater than 0 uh, or a is greater than 1, it's going to look like in this form. And the main important thing, again, when factoring, when solving by factoring, we're going to set our equation equal to 0 and we're going to want to make sure it's in descending form. Now, the main point thing that you know, a lot of students get with this, or some troubles they have, is they think about, well, <clears throat> you know, I need to write these two factors. And previously, we said you know, the two factors could be x times p and you know, x plus q. And you say, where did x and q come from? Well, remember, we set up our factors in c and b, where what two numbers multiply to give us c, what two numbers add to give us b, and those two values were p and q. Then, once we have it factored in that format, we can now apply the zero product property. The problem when a is not equal to 1 is x times x does not give you ax squared. That gives you x squared. So now we have to account for these two other values where m times n is going to equal a. Well, how do you find these two values? Now, through practice, hopefully we want to get you at the point where you can do this in your head. But some problems you're just not going to be able to do in your head, and you're going to have to work it out. So that's why I want to give you uh, go through a problem where I could help you out and show you what to do. So let's actually set a problem that's already set equal to 0. And I have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. All right. Now, in general terms, what we did before is we'd say, all right, what two numbers multiply to give us c, where our c in this case is negative 3, and then add to give us b. Now, by looking at this, they say, well, there's no two numbers that multiply to give you c to add to give you b, 5, and you say, oh, it's prime, it's non-factorable, and so forth. But we have this a is equal to 2. So when we have this case, when this scenario, when factoring this, by using this method, I'm going to use a times c. So now what I want to do is I want to multiply 2 times negative 3, which gives me a negative 6. Now I'm looking at the factors of negative 6 that multiply to give us positive 5. And since that, po the, since that 5 is positive, I know that the largest of my factors also has to be positive. So I'll show you my case. So if I have negative 6. That means I could do 6 times negative 1. Um, I could do 3 times negative, negative 2, and that's so forth. I could also do negative 6 times 1 and negative 3 times 2. But what I told you before is since I know that 5 is positive, the larger of my factors has to be positive because as I add these, I want it to be a positive value. Well, you can see the two solutions are 5 and uh, 6 and 1. 6 and negative 1, I'm sorry. So that's our b, which is 5, which we call b. All right. So now we get to these two points. And again, another step where students will make their mistakes is they'll say, oh, OK, well, I got that. So that's x plus 6 times x minus 1. Well, yes, those add up to 5. But the problem again now is x times x doesn't give you 2x squared. And 6 times negative 1 doesn't give you negative 3. Because remember, we can always check our answer by um, using the distributive property. So the one method, I'll, one method I'll show you guys to do is you can um, break apart your middle term, which, we call, which we'll use the fa um, grouping technique. So I say 2x squared, I'll take these two terms, plus 6x minus x minus 3. So what I did is I broke up 5x into 6x minus x. And now I factor by grouping my first two and my last two terms. So I factor out the GCF for the first two terms, which is a 2x x plus 3. And then I have factor out the, um, factor out the GCF for the last two terms, which is x plus 3. Now I factor out the whole expression, and I see what do these two share in common? Well, they both share an x plus 3 as an expression, so I factor that out. And then x plus 3 times 2x minus 1 equals 0. Now I can apply the zero product property. And then I use my inverse operations. Okay, So that's one technique. That's maybe the elongated technique. One of the quicker techniques when you're looking at this, and if I say I want to factor this, well, ladies and gentlemen, we know, as I mentioned before, these two factors, mx and, and, and nx, have to multiply to give you ax squared. 
So really, my only options are 2x times x, right? And sometimes if the a is larger, you're going to have to pick dip, you know, more values. Let's say it's 6. Well, it could be 6x and x. It could be 3x and 2x. Um, you know, so you've got more different options. But in this case, I'm only looking for these two numbers to make sure they multiply to give me 2x squared. Now I need to go back and to look into my factors for negative 3. Well, the factors for negative 3 are just negative 3 and positive 1 and negative 1 and positive 3. Now again, we could change this into a whole different, you know, we could do negative 3, um, positive 1. I could do positive 3 and negative 1. And then I could also rewrite these to the other side, negative 1, positive 3, positive 1, negative 3. So there's a lot of different options now when I'm looking for my factors of 3, as long as these last two numbers multiply to give me negative 3. So the trick to this is to multiply them for your middle terms, which we call the inner and the outer, that are going to add to give us 5x. And by doing that, what we notice that the only way that we can do this would be the 2x times 3, which would give us 6x, and then negative 1 times x, which would give us negative 1x. Those middle terms add to give us 5x. I already know my first two terms multiply to give me 2x squared, and my last two terms multiply to give me negative 3. So those are two ways. I'm going to go through a couple other methods through there, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of at least the process that we're going to be looking for when you want to solve by factoring when you have a is not equal to 1. Thanks.